What up everyone, I'm Jendrek and this is episode number 6 of the State of Modern. So today I would like to go over two main topics, which is this weekend's PTQ, in Modern obviously, and the BNR announcement that is supposed to drop most likely on the next Monday, which is the 15th of February. Uh, as you may know, uh, with uh, what's the... Uh, scheduled the super job of the newest secret lair and they remarked that uh, they will ban Uro, Titans of Nature's Wrath in Modern, Pioneer and Historic uh, during the upcoming announcement. Uh, but first I would like to say uh, to talk about PTQ. Uh, this will be quite likely I think the only tournament of this level of like PTQ, GP, whatever level with Valky Cascade interaction intact and I expect a lot of people will try to abuse it. Well, rightfully so, as it's broken in half, obviously. And as usual, I'm not swimming with the current, and I, I've i tried to find a solution deck, as, as Sodic likes to call, call them, and I've done decently with Blue Black Delver. And this is my current list of, of Blue Black Delver that I'm playing in the challenge right now. Uh, I'm three and one, and now I'm waiting for the round uh, uh, five to start. And this is the list I'm gonna most likely register tomorrow at the PTQ. Uh, main deck is basically locked, and so is most of the sideboard. Uh, the only cards that I am still not sure about are Surgicals and Dead of Winter, which are like the newest addition to the sideboard. Um, but they've been good for me so far in the challenge, so they will prob probably stay intact for tomorrow as well. Uh, some card explore explanations that I think are uh, are in place are most most people would ask me or ask me most of my friends that I've shown this deck to uh, would ask me and ridicule me obviously uh, about uh, Icehead Golem, which is the one snow mana two two artifact creature from Modern Horizons, and <laughs> believe it or not, it is the best aggressive one drop aside from Delver you can play in blue black. Uh, you don't have Wild Nakatl, you don't have Swift Spear, you don't have Goblin Guide, you don't have any of these sort of things in Blue Black, really. And Ice Head Golem is basically the only two power one drop in Modern that's blue, or that can be cast off of an island, a uh, snow covered island for that, uh, for, for that matter. And the other one is Phantasma Bear, which is obviously not that great if your plan is to protect your threat with with counter magic because obviously uh if they if they target phantasmal bear with anything it will just die um so we are basically left with ice head golem and i think it's kind of uh strange in a way that you didn't really have tempo decks in modern for the most part like this style of delverish decks uh, so I think some people forgot how good it is to have a two, two power one drop with a lot of counter spells uh, behind it, basically. So I, I think that Ice Head Golem looks very unassuming, but it actually performed well for me. Like, I'm not saying it's the best card ever, but it, it basically is doing its job very well. You are just dropping it on turn one and then you are protecting it with counter spells and it just deals damage to your opponent and it is pretty good against like Ren and Six for example. It's not it has two toughness. Uh it pressures quite okay, so I've been pleased with it. And another addition that I think we should talk about is spell pierce. Uh it's really really good right now. Uh with a lot of bulky decks coming around, spell pierce can answer most of their stuff for one mana, which is insane. And it's another reason for golems, because it's it's a much, much better card if you have pressure on the table. So in a more like uh, controlish versions of Delver, I can imagine playing only four Delvers on your, as your one drops. But in this deck with three spell pierces, I think you really need a one drop in many matchups. So hence the golems and the one Ascendant Spirit, which is uh, basically... Worse than Golem on turn 1, obviously, but it's nice to have one of these as a mana sink for the late later stages of the game. But you basically never want to draw two over like a Golem or whatever. Um, regarding sideboard, 
Chaos Guile is still a very, very good catch-all uh, catch that I really like in this deck because it allows you to compress the sideboard slots that I've talked about last weekend and on my stream as well uh, because you, you get to just fit all these life gain cards and graveyard hate slots and uh, creature removal slots into just four cards in your sideboard, which is really, really uh, valuable in a format as white as modern. And I guess the last card I wanted to talk about is Surgical Extraction, uh, which is in paper, I think, good against Bulky, uh, mostly because it is effectively a counterspell for their second Cascade. You have enough counterspells in your deck to have an answer to the first Cascade most of the time. Uh, and then if they already have Bulky in the graveyard because you counter the first Bulky and they Cascade again, you can just surgical in response to cascade trigger and you just get rid of all their valkies and the cascade is effectively effectively fizzled because they don't have anything else to cascade it to. Uh, so it's basically a counter spell for subsequent valkies and when you manage to extract all of their valkies the match becomes just so much easier for you so i think it's uh, it's good in paper I haven't played a lot with it, as I haven't played a lot of Magic this week. I have a, I've had some IRL, IRL stuff that I, that I've had to take care of. Uh, so, I like it on paper, and it was okay for me so far in the challenge. So, I think I will stick to it tomorrow as well. Plus, also it gives you some outs uh, for like Uro or uh, Season Pyromancer, depending on which version of Valky your opponent is playing. Uh, so, to sum it all up, Pressure Rank plus Counter Magic is very good versus Valky Emo. Uh, obviously, to, to some extent, because Valky is still the broken deck of the format, and even if you have a sound plan versus them, as I think I believe I do, they can overpo overpower you. So, I feel okay in the matchup, but it's by no means an auto win or something like that. Uh, it's still a close, close matchup, but I think like. I'm a slight favorite, very, very slight favorite against them. Um, so the other topic I wanted to talk about is BNDR discussion uh, announcement. And as I've alluded to earlier, uh, they will change things on Monday in two days. Uh, most likely that's what that's what WotC account tweeted because in the original announcement that they've, they haven't specified the date, but then the WotC uh, Twitter page retweeted this this announcement and they've said something to, to the meaning of uh you will know more on monday the 15th so i assume this will be the bound announcement and they won't keep up any any longer with with this euro format uh, i i will only discuss modern as i don't know enough about other format at the moment to make any sort of educated guess and up to, on top of these bounds and unbounds i will I will show you in a moment. Uh, I expect Valky Cascade interaction to be fixed in some way. Uh, you can fix fix it in multitude different different ways. You can just state that you always have to cascade in the into the front half of model DFC cards, or you can also you can only cascade in uh, in the back half or into the back half if it still meets the criteria of the of the cascade or you can do some other fixes but effect the effect of these fixes will be that you can't no longer cascade into tibalt uh, so this is my dream BRN, bnr announcement uh, i'm not saying it's the most likely outcome in fact i believe it's not very likely uh, if if you if you ask me for a mo most likely outcome in my opinion it would be minus euro and minus field and no unbans i think that's what's most likely to happen on top of the cascade interaction of course uh, but that's what i would like to see would do myself or would do myself uh, if i was in charge of the ban list uh, so first let's go over the bans euro is ob obvious as what's already announced it so not much to say ab about it uh, field is the most egregious card play pattern wise in the format in my opinion and i can see the word in in which WotC just keeps keeps it in the format to see if it's still as oppressive with Uro, but if it was up to me, I would just ban it and never look back. 
And then Veil of Summer is just a nonsense card that should be unprinted and um, there's not much more about it. It's not too strong, it's just it's just nonsense and it shouldn't ever exist. This is the th like the same alongside the lines of like the fairy time raveler, which should should never exist, or like Narset or whatever. But Veil is the most offensive card of these, I think. Um, so as uh, as this was as far for like bans and regarding unbans, which are obviously way more exciting than bans. Uh, I think the preordain is the safest unban of the bunch, and it was banned like 10 years ago alongside some really, really broken stuff like Rite of Flame out of the Storm deck. And I believe it would be perfectly fine and it would bolster blue decks without Uro, because Uro is gone for sure. Maybe Field of the Dead is, go is gone as well. And I assume Prowess that, or Death Shadow or the, this type, type of fast pot seeds or just Lightning Bolt decks will be tier 1 or even better after Uro is banned, especially if Field goes with it. Uh, so a bit more consistency would be welcome for other decks. So I believe you still... It wouldn't broke anything in half, basically. Uh, I don't think that Adnodium or Storm or anything, uh, another combo deck of this like spell-based nature would be too good with Preordain because you are mostly gated on, on your speed, not on your consistency, because with Gives and Given and with multiple mana bears of of storm you will usually win on turn three and preordain doesn't really help you accomplish it faster you you, you can't really win on turn two with preordain or something like this similarly with ad nauseum you can't really really win before turn four uh, and it's not like preordain will help you win on turn three it will be good at finding turn one lotus so you will win on turn four more often but uh i think this like slide a uh, slight increase in consistency for these combo decks isn't something bad. And also it will give your like interactive blue decks tools to find like this path of exile uh, path to exile or this oust or celestial purge or fatal push or whatever else you need to interact with uh, with prowess decks. Just a tad bit consistently. And I think this is something that's needed for these decks. Uh Twin was in my opinion, rightfully banned five years ago as it was too good. Uh, but I don't believe it would be the case in our current modern for two main reasons. So, first of all, uh, one of the main reasons that Twin was banned was the false tempo argument. That Twin just creates false tempo because it, it just makes its opponent keep the mana open all the time, they can develop their own war because they have to keep up with uh, interacting for their combo, uh, which was true. Uh, but I don't think the false tempo would be as ex exacerbated or as good right now because A, interaction is better and cheaper now, so we have Force of Negation, we have Force of Vigor, we have Fatal Push, probably some other card that I can't think of right now uh, that can just interact with, with their combo for zero or one mana. Plus, Second thing is that people's curve is lower and keeping one keeping up one mana isn't that problematic as it was. For example, imagine playing Red Black Death Shadow against Twin. It would be probably maybe not a cakewalk for for Death Shadow, but it would be I think Death Shadow would favor it. You haven't really seen main deck dismembers back in the day. Uh, you obviously haven't seen Fatal Push because it wasn't a, a card and these like. Zoo-ish prowess decks wasn't killing you so often on turn two or three or turn three or four rather because they can't really turn, kill you on turn two obviously um so this is my first point about twin and the second is that exar and pestermite used to be fine-ish creatures in modern as like exar as a blocker and pestermite as a tempo beater uh, but these day these days like right now they should be considered as a junk combo piece as well, just like Twin, as Exar won't really block Death Shadow as it blocked Nakatl or Voice of Resurgence or whatever else in, in its days. And Ren and Six and Lava Dart exists and you can just basically kill Pestermite just by looking at it these days. Um, and Astrolabe, as far as Astrolabe goes, it's definitely the most controversial card on my list. Uh, but I think Erza was a really, really cool deck, and I would see it. I would, I would like to see it in modern again. 
Uh, I would gladly give up Sanctuary uh, for Astrolabe Unban, but even without it, I don't think it would be too good in blue decks, as you don't have neither Uro or Oko anymore, and Astrolabe wasn't really broken in blue decks before they just printed a bunch of pushed blue-green mythics. It was just a fine card that you played in Urza and Control decks didn't really play it. It would probably change now, because people were sleeping on Astrolabe most likely in like interactive decks, but I don't think it would be as dominating as it was with Uro or Oko before. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about with you today. And tomorrow is the PTQ. Uh, I will be streaming it on my Twitch channel. And then on Monday, I will most likely not stream uh, in the morning as I use, usually do. I will wait till the announcement dropped at 5 p.m. Uh, Central European, which is usually around the time I'm like three quarters into my stream or I'm even finishing uh, finishing from time to time. Uh, but I will fire it up at this time uh, or at that time, uh, which is for you Americans, I think uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern and like 8 a.m. Pacific, I think, but I'm not I'm not certain. Um, and I will just do a deck building stream. So I'm going to see what the announcement is, what cards aside from Uro are banned, what cards are unbanned. And I will just build a bunch of decks that I will play later on this weekend, this week. And I'm really excited about it, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's it for me today. And yeah, come, come and watch me play PTQ tomorrow. See you. Bye bye.